You could see Mount Fuji from the town where I was born. Massive and majestic. It was forever looming in the background. Looking at it always helped to clear my head if I was having a bad day. Sometimes I'd spend hours staring at the mountain. And afterwards, I wouldn't want to go back home again. My father ran a hole-in-the-wall yakiniku restaurant on the ground floor of our little house. It was always dark at home, and the air was thick with oil. The mats, the walls, even our furniture. Everything was covered in a film of yellow grease. After our mom was gone, no one took over the cleaning. It got so bad that there was a slick layer of fat on the spare mattresses in the closet. No matter how many times I tried washing things, the grease would always come back. To make matters worse, my dad was incredibly oily himself. He always had a pungent, fatty smell to him. My brother was two years older than me, and a real monster. Whenever dad wasn't around, he'd bully me, often violently. I never knew what would set him off. He also had a bizarre, secret habit. Every now and then, he'd sneak into the kitchen and drink vegetable oil. It seemed like he enjoyed it. You're watching me, aren't you, Yui? You better not tell Dad or I'll make you regret it. You know what'll happen if you do. How much I can hurt you. The sticky walls, my father's sickening odor, and my brother, who was as disgusting as the fat itself. I hated it all. The older I got, the more sensitive I became to the oil in our house. I was eventually able to sense how much of it was in the air at any given time. I could feel it around me, clinging to my skin and coating my lungs. Oil saturation. That's the term I used to describe how much grease there was. Like a weather report. Ding dong, ding dong. The current oil saturation is at 50%. Please exercise caution around any open flames. The current oil saturation level is at 60%. I repeat, saturation level is at 60%. When my brother entered puberty, he started getting really bad pimples all over his forehead. Eventually, the breakout spread to the rest of his face. Even later, he'll hear you. You stay the hell away from us, Goro! Your face looks like it's about to erupt. <laughs> you idiot! You touched my uniform with your greasy nose, freak! You gotta pay for the cleaning! I want 50,000 yen by tomorrow or you're dead, got it? I saw you there! You laughed, didn't you? You thought I deserved to get beaten up! Goro, stop this right now! Let go of me, damn it! It's your fault my face looks like this in the first place! My entire body is polluted thanks to all the oil from your stupid restaurant! But do you even care? No! Stop it, Goro! That's enough! Calm yourself! 
After that, my brother shut himself up in his dark room. He just sat there drinking bottles of oil. Ugh. Huey! Hey, Huey! Where the hell are you? I'm here. What's the matter? I'm out of oil. Go buy some more. And give me a new mattress, too. This one's so sticky, I can't sleep on it. It's gross! Yeah, mine's the same way. Only, Dad won't give me any money. Shut up! There's gotta be cash somewhere! Why do you have to make me so angry? Mm, disgusting! Huh? Did you just say I was disgusting? <laughs> I see. So you hate the oil on my face that much, do you? Then how about I give you a big taste? <laughs> <laughs> yeah? You like that? All the oil coming up from my volcanoes? Serves you right. You and everyone else always trying to make a fool out of me. You wait. I'll kill every last one of you. And you're the first one who's going to be punished. This is what you get for laughing at me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Goro. What? You gotta be kidding, right? I'm not eating there. That place is seriously filthy. Yeah, but it's good. I went the other day and the food was incredible. The meat was super fatty. In that case... Welcome, gentlemen. Smells good. I want an order of that delicious new meat. I had it the other day. Um, hmm. I'm sorry, but... We actually ran out of that meat yesterday. You're gonna have to order something else. Oh man, really? Uh, yeah. Current oil saturation, 70%. That's higher than yesterday. It was around that time that I started having really odd dreams and terrible nightmares. They usually started off the same way, with me staring at Mount Fuji. Pimples started to appear all over my face, and because I was embarrassed, I barely ever left the house. Yui, are you still not feeling any better? Why don't you go take a walk or something outside? Can't you please just leave me alone for once? The current oil saturation is at 80%. I repeat, 80%. Yui. What are you doing to me? Oh, so you're awake, huh? I'm sorry, kid. I thought you might be thirsty, so I was just giving you a drink. Even if I was, why would I drink vegetable oil? Yeah, I guess you got a point. You always squirm when I give it to you. You've done this before. Have you been making me drink oil at night? Uh, no. You have? What is wrong with you? Crazy girl. I'm off to bed. Go back to sleep. It's true. I know it is. Dad's been forcing me to swallow oil for who knows how long. Just like I do in my nightmares. From that point on, I took precautions. At night, I was constantly on guard. Oh. Oh. 
<sighs> I'm over this place. Who cares about Yakiniku? In the days that followed, my dad got even greasier. The saturation level would rise the moment he walked into the room. There would be a layer of grease in the bath after he used it, shimmering sickly. And more oil soaked into his mattress than ever before, as if it were a sponge. Then, one night... What is that sound? <laughs> the trouble down to the floor wasn't blood. Instead, it was thick, golden-brown oil. The current saturation level is 100%. I repeat, 100%. My grandmother lives in the country alone, and lately it seems like she's scared. She asks for someone, anyone, to come over. This place always looks so gloomy. Who would be out here at this hour? Maybe a friend of Grandma's? Excuse me. Good evening. You must know my grandmother, who lives in this house, yes? Oh, good. I hoped so. She's lived here since last year. That's when my grandfather died. Honestly, we've all been kind of worried about her being so far away. I'm happy to hear that she has visitors. my uncle. But he died a very long time ago. I was only a child when it happened. Still, I remember it. He's out there every night lately, wandering around the bridge. Since your grandpa died and I've been alone out here, those things have started popping up around sundown. You'll likely see more of them. Are you saying that they're ghosts? They must have been waiting for me to be by myself before they showed up. You hear that? The ghosts are calling for me. But there's so many voices. A lot of people in this village have died over the generations, and many of them haven't fully passed on yet. Yes, but what do they want with you? Well, you see, my dear, they want to get a hold of me and drag me down into the river. Look closely at them. They're beckoning me out. for me all night long. I barely slept at all since I've been back at this house. I'm sure you'll see. You won't be able to sleep either. Instead, why don't I tell you a story from when I was young that might explain a few things? Come, take a seat over here with me. It's a tale I've never told you before. I was born and raised in this house. My entire life has been spent living within these walls, give or take a few years. The village used to be pretty lively. I know that must be hard to believe because of how empty it feels these days. But back then we were a tight community and we even had some odd traditions, like the way we handled our funerals. The first funeral I can remember was when Kingaro died, the uncle who you met outside. The day of the ceremony, everyone in the village met at the edge of the river to see his body off to heaven. 
I watched by my mother's side from a spot on top of the bridge. He's coming! Kingoro's just around the bend! Osade, your uncle's almost here. Take a good look and say goodbye. Sure has bad luck. Oh no, your uncle fell. Oh, the poor, poor man. Hey, wait, Mom. What's going to happen to him now that he's in the water? The river widens on this side of the bridge, and it's much deeper as well. He won't drift downstream. He's going to sink here. If he had just stayed on the mat, he could have been able to float on all the way to heaven. Can't we at least tie the bodies to the mats? It would be much safer. That's out of the question. Tradition is tradition, after all. And then there was Shokichi. Shokichi? Yes, he was a very popular young man in the village who died when he was only 20 years old. He was also the last person who we put to rest that way, sending his body floating down the river. I was 16 when it happened. Shokichi was the biggest man in the village, a giant. Goodness, he must have been over six and a half feet tall. But he was a good man. He had a gentle heart as soft as silk. He was the first person I ever fell in love with. <laughs> and he was my fiancé. But some trees fell on him in the mountain and he passed away. He was so tall we had to use two mats at the funeral. Okay, I was so sick with grief that I was beside myself. Even if some people were secretly excited to see if his big body would stay on the mats. <laughs> Look, Osude's actually crying. Can you blame her? I think I see him over there! Shokichi! Ah, it's gonna hit! Oh dear! His body is simply too big, and since it's stiff, he's stuck at the mouth of the bridge! Hey, kids, do something to help out. We can't just leave him like this. Don't you feel sorry for this poor fellow? <clears throat> Got him. As he floated away, it felt like my love Shokichi had his eyes wide open looking at me the entire time. Is that possible? To this day, I've wondered what he was trying to say to me down at the river. I think that maybe his eyes were trying to tell me to join him soon. All those people who fell into the river must be waiting for me. That's why their ghosts appear every night and call out to me to come to the water. I'm just so scared. Anna, dear, I don't think I'm going to last much longer in this world. What are you saying, Grandma? You only think that because you've been alone here too long. You're coming back to the city with me tomorrow. It's too late for me. I'm going to die very soon. No, Grandma, you can't say that. Kana, dear, if I die, please promise me that you'll bury me beneath the ground. No matter what happens, don't let me float down the river. I don't want to sink into the water forever. Promise me, I'm counting on you. Are you okay? Please talk to me. What's wrong? Grandma! Grandma! Please don't die! <gasps> Thank goodness. It was just a dream. I get it. I must have gotten sleepy on the way here and pulled over so I could take a little nap.
that's creepy. Just like it was in my dream. It can't be. Good evening. My niece, Ulfide. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you that she's passed away. <laughs> Grandma! Grandma, are you back here? Grandma? <sighs> oh, no. <gasps> Look! Up the river! Here comes also day. Isn't it wonderful? Now Osode and Shokichi can finally be married. Yes, but Osode has grown quite old, unfortunately. Grandma! Grandma! Am I crazy? Or did it seem like she was looking at me?